last year, wasn't he? Yeah, he really was. He's a very exciting player, I think. Um, yeah, he's a player that I like to watch if we're not playing them. Yeah, uh, good news for the Salford side is they were able to bring Callum Watkins back into the match day squad for the first time in, I think, 10 months. It, I, it looks like when he came on, he might have played a bit of second row in the game. Um, it, he did get a grade A late hit on pass and no match penalty notice, so maybe he's not been watching closely enough whilst he's been <laughs> not playing. But um, other than that, good to have him back. Yeah, maybe he's not realised that, that the rules have clamped up a bit. Yeah. Uh, Maxine Puesh from Catalan's also got a grade B late hit on passer. And when they've... Uh, do you know what? I haven't had time today because I was finishing off the rundown and putting stuff like this in the rundown to go and see the Facebook comments or the Twitter comments because I bet they were hilarious. Because what's happened here, right, is they've done a typo. They meant to put one match penalty notice. And if you actually read the match review panel minutes, it does say one match penalty notice. But... Everyone else would have been kicking off about a grade B getting no match penalty notice, like it said on the actual right, yeah, website thing before you clicked into the full minutes. So I imagine that meltdown was hilarious. Um, Sam Tompkins had a bit of a strop at them as well over um, getting teams assigning the players to the wrong teams. Oh, uh, was that happening too? It's well, sometimes I've seen him spell players' names wrong as well. It's like, how can they check a player's? previous record if they've spelled it wrong and they can't yeah. and they don't come up in a search but yeah, maybe that's why some of these players are getting you know if they, if they want me to be a quality analyst for them i'd, I'd happily uh happily take Give the salary yeah <laughs> um what was the other thing i wanted to say then on this one uh yeah catalan's good obviously well done um winning against an inferior side it's what they're supposed to do uh short turnaround well done to them Salford's attack seems to heavily rely on kicks to the right wing and the first one was pretty similar to what we've seen apart from it was cross scoring it not CO yeah the, the second try though at the end of the game which was a consolation try really CO's try that was a really special try it was a double kick play so Sneed chips it over the first line of defence really gathers it in and then kicks a longer kick this time out to the the right wing for um for CO to gather and score and that was a really good try. I don't know if it made the try of the week contenders, but it it was definitely the best try in this game. It's just Salford aren't consistently creative um, at the moment. I'm not sure why that is. Whether it's a platform not being able to be built by the forwards or or what, because that's kind of what I expected from Salford this year. Is the forwards wouldn't be consistently up to it. Um, they've had a few good games, but against leads uh and teams like that but uh, i shouldn't be saying too much about salford criticism wise because we're gonna have got them next week so (laughs) it'll be interesting to see if this pack step up because once they're when their pack does lay a good platform or when their backs make a lot of meters as well on early carries they have got a really good creative spine defensively it's not the best spine but you know akers is strong defensively actually credit to him but um Sneed and Croft and Braley, all very creative players. Yeah. It's but... just... Sorry, go on. No, 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 I was agreeing with you. Yeah, they, they do seem to that that, that lack defensively. Um... And lack a platform for the attack sometimes. Yeah. Because of the, I guess can't comes hand in hand with that, losing the energy battle up, up front. Um, okay. Next game was one where I think everyone other than Hull KR fans was cheering for Toulouse and hoping for an upset. And most of us had picked an upset to happen potentially here, but unfortunately it didn't. It finished Hull KR 28, Toulouse 24 after the home side. Toulouse had led 12 nil at half time. 6,180, which I think might be Toulouse's best or second best crowd so far. Aaron Moore, I think, was the referee from the highlights I saw. It looked most like him of all the referees. Um, t- in terms of team stats, the game was... the get This game su- surpassed Good Friday's Hull Derby for the game with the most number of tackle busts slash missed tackles of the season so far. There was 76 in this one. Shared yeah. equally 38 tackle bust slash missed tackles each unsurprisingly with such a high tackle bust number nine, both teams had below 90% team tackle success rate that is a Easter Monday stat that yeah um, other numbers were close to 
same same number of breaks less than 100 meters difference between the sides only one error different between the sides on the stats as well the major difference was discipline Toulouse conceded seven penalties compared to only two conceded by Rovers so composure and discipline has, has been an issue for Toulouse and it still remains individually Ryan Hall two tries five tackle balls 147 meters and three clean breaks Dean Hadley 137 meters Will Dagger seven tackle balls 119 meters he came in for coup at fullback and Sean Kenny Dowell one try assist in 108 metres for the losing TO side Maxime Stefani with one try assist in 128 metres Ilias Bergal who I think should play more for this side 118 metres and Junior Vivi was back from injury 102 metres for him um, do you want to give us the first of the fan views yeah Tom Andrews said it sounded a sluggish game with a tired Rovers team and a Toulouse team slowing it down at every chance but a win's a win been many years since an Easter back to back and five in a row in all comps, great times. Might be biased, I am. But surely, as one of the form props, Kingy has got to be looking for international honours. Old God up the fucking Robins. I mean, he's been good for Hull KR, but international honours is, is a stretch, I think. For Oh, actually, no. He's eligible to play for Ireland. He'll be playing for Ireland in the World Cup. Oh, there we go then. Brian Davies got in touch. He said, really good atmosphere at this one. Tio got to a, got off to a solid start, 12-0 at half-time. Even led 18-4 with 27 minutes to go. Then it all went pear-shaped. Our propensity for making basic errors, repeated knock-ons coming off our own line, or not taking chances, two goal line dropouts that we failed to get the ball from. Oh, pff, sum up how it's going. That's four points we've thrown away over Easter. Relegation will be certain if we keep that up. Do you know what? Brian's was a late one in, and I'd already written my own notes up um, on on what I thought of the game before yeah. Brian. I thought I read Brian's, but he said a lot of it. I'm sure you'll agree with me, uh, Sarah. It was a real shame that Toulouse couldn't hold on to what was a strong first half that they, that they made. Yeah, and it's not the first game, is it, that they've looked solid and then just not managed to keep it up for 80 minutes yeah yeah they were leading at half time against Wigan as well weren't they um, yeah one thing I did notice as I was sort of scanning Twitter at half time of the Wigan game seeing what was going on around the grounds I caught the start the tweets at the start of the second half of this game it sounds like they made an error from the second half kickoff and then Rovers scored within that possession afterwards right um, so that didn't help but as as Bryce said, Tio were able to extend their lead. They scored again after that. So they're going to be really annoyed with the last 20 minutes that yeah. they put in in this game. Um, they need to be playing for a full 80, don't they? Yeah, and they need to be more resilient and tough down the middle of the field. I don't know if it's a fitness thing as well as an edge of a quality thing or whatever, but they seem to the pack seems to start games really well and match the opposition. But yeah. have you seen the tries that were scored in the second half by OKR, especially especially the Matty Stoughton try? That's nowhere near good enough defence to, to be in Super League, unfortunately. No. And I think I think it, it, it's frustrating, um, you know, from Toulouse's point of view, because I think a lot of us expected them to come up and get completely hammered every week yeah especially when they lost them players at the start of the year yeah and they haven't um you know they've really made a good showing of themselves and but it seems to be a case of so near yet so far and they just yeah stupid tries to concede um and defensive frailties and just lack of smarts i guess um and um, yeah, and I guess that's got to really hurt them as a as a team, as a club, and everything, and the fans because actually, when you feel like you are so close, and you know, they've got a really good record against Rovers in France, and being, uh, you know, what was it, eighteen four up or something, then you should be close. You need to be closing out those games. And it's not like they don't have some good skill and in the performances either like uh mark ons i think it was the third to lose try he, he a great in and out by him to finish in the corner that was an excellent play and i think he's you know he scored he scored the winning try against um 
Saints, didn't he? And he scored a few tries this year. Yeah. I think he's showing that he can be a Super League caliber player. It, defensively, he'll get shown up here, you know, here and again. There, Ryan Hall did get round him a couple of times, but he got round Ryan Hall a couple of times too. It's he's a good player, and he's he's a sign of what they can be as long as they were able to supplement that with a couple of really strong and fit players in the middle of the pitch and they've got some strong players like Garbert but he's not fit mm. they've got some fit players that aren't that strong and it's yeah. it's it's just a shame that it's not all coming together it, it, I don't feel like they're a million miles off winning a handful of games yeah but they've got to stop the stupid stuff and the stupid stuff is some of the errors they make with the ball in hand but also some of the weak defending and whole KR just took total advantage of that in the second half of this game even though their own Twitter feed was kind of like suggesting it was a bit close for comfort yeah the gift game was strong though <laughs> <laughs> Uh, nothing else out of that game though to talk about so clean game which is a, a, a bonus over this weekend right the game I was at let's get to that one uh, where are we up to now um, Wigan versus Wakefield it was 24-4 to Wigan at half time it finished 54-10 11,621 were there Jack Smith was the referee in terms of the team stats Wigan's meter numbers were the highest by any team so far this year they got 1,658 metres at 10.1 metres per carry average gain. Um, nine Wigan players went over 100 metres, which is pretty remarkable. Uh, the stat wins were obviously comprehensive, therefore. Over 600 more metres made, uh, over three metres per carry better average gain, seven more breaks, despite two more errors by Wigan. And it might have been more if Wigan hadn't have put the two Ferraris back in the garage early with French being taken off at half time to be rested up and Field coming off after about 55-60 minutes as well so yeah um, individually Jay Field two tries two try assists 200 metres and two clean breaks Bevan French two tries and 138 metres in one half uh, Avis Miski one try one try assist 10 tackle bus 136 metres and three clean breaks um, Patrick Mago slips in ahead of a number of other Wigan players who could have got in with one try assist and 132 metres and probably the longest amount of minutes he's played all year that's how little defending he had to do he didn't get tired um, for Wakefield Corey Hall he he was decent against the side where he was on the academy terms at uh, 127 metres Eddie Batty 106 metres and Brad Walker he had to come off the bench quite early in a reshuffle because um, Min's managed to concuss himself scoring a try unfortunately he failed his HIA so Brad Walker came on went into hooker 41 tackles from him uh, do you want to give us the first of the fan views yep so Matt Speakman said what a response front row superb French and field electric before they put their feet up <laughs> made use of the extra man after the simpin and looked dangerous every time we got the ball to say that there were a lot of backups playing today everyone played incredibly well and put on a show for the fans not a happy trip for the wakey fans that made the trip they deserve better from their players yeah white pie Lee said a repeat of the cup quarter final saw wakey roll into Wigan and leave on the back of a 54-10 hammering wakey dominated early on and scored first but after that couldn't live with Wigan down the middle or out wide Miski scored a well worked first try for the club and a good tackle saw him narrowly miss out on a second I would say bad finishing saw him narrowly miss out on a second Wigan's pace around the ruck created havoc especially after Tanganoa was binned just before half time Wigan scored four tries in their first four second half possessions three of those whilst Tonganoa sat stewing and without French who was rested for the second half while Field was substituted after an hour or so the game quietened down with one more try apiece one of which was a 90 yard sprint okay a 10 yard sprint from Singleton for his second all in all an excellent performance backing up after a hard derby on Friday yeah do you know what I remembered sort of midway through this game is when Sean Wayne was coach of Wigan Wigan were very good over Easter particularly when we have Mark Bitcon as the in terms of in, in charge of performance and fitness and that but obviously he's not there now but they've got that right because they were way more tuned up for this game than Wakefield were the, the game started really similar to the cup game two weeks uh, well 
a week ago, really, weren't it? Wakey, wakey, and good field position. Yeah, 